Well, I bought a whole bunch of knives recently from White Mountain Knives, and they all showed up at the same time. So, woohoo! So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go totally open up all these little sun bitches. If I do need it, I got this uh, nice little Tucson TS257 G10 with that nice M390 blade, super slicey. That's what I use to undo the uh, the outer packaging, which is why you can see all that tape glue on there. First up, I got a CMB. This is the Predator. This one was kind of interesting looking to me. And so I decided to purchase this. Mmm, snacks. All right, let's see. A little zipper here. And a little, um, interesting because it's microfiber cloth, but the, uh, the insignia doesn't really conduce itself to no, Oh, well. And, uh, yeah, looks like a nice 70s basement kind of a <laughs> carpet going on there. But, yes, okay. Attention, you are buying on knife. What? All right. <laughs> and, yeah, this guy's got an access lock on him. Blam. It's got a heck of a sharpening trial there, but hey, a lot of um, access locks seem to have that. This guy's got all sorts of uh, protectant or lubrication. Yeah, nice action on him. Yeah, it feels like it's running on bearings. We got a uh, deep carry clip there. Can't reverse it. Well, that's okay, I suppose. Ooh, that is difficult to do with one finger. You gotta really. Yeah, I I gen tend to have that problem on a lot of um access locks. This one's obviously super broken, so I can do that with one finger. And that's kind of what I'm used to these days. But, uh, yeah, most of them end up having to uh, use both fingers to pull them back simultaneously. But, yeah, pretty interesting. I do like the blade shape on it. And, ooh, yeah, that's a nice, nice and thin behind the edge there. So that's pretty darn sweet. A little red micarta action there. Not much grip on it at all, but that's okay. I wasn't really expecting the world. This thing wasn't exactly uh, super expensive. I do have this uh, Kaiser here. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, uh, it is a Vanguard model, technically. This one, probably not an enormous amount of people are going to be interested in, but that's okay, because I am. And this is a Kaiser Zip Flip. This is a, uh, yeah, one hand open slip joint here. Super nice, comfortable, um, Finger choil there, which makes that safe. And then, yeah, this is another one in 4V. This one, I do believe, came out before the uh, the Feist did. But, uh, yeah, same kind of thing going on here. I do like that micarta. Feels super nice. Interesting pocket clip on this guy. Um... It is inset and flat, and that's why you don't have a, a huge amount of space there. But, uh, yeah, the pocket clip's got a lot of, um, flex to it. This is a, uh, Michael Vagnino design. Yeah. I was kind of interested in, um, this for a while just to, uh, get another kind of slip joint going on here. And, uh, 
Seeing as how this one had that uh, fancy steel as well, I figured that would be a, a neat one for me. This doesn't quite have a half stop. It's a little bit further back, but it does have one. Really smooth action on it, too. That's pretty neat. Yeah, I like that. It does feel a little... Like if I am choking up on that, uh, that I don't want to have my thumb back there because it's not the strongest spring in the world, as you can see. It's pretty easy to uh, poke there. So I suppose I could do that while I'm cutting or might want to uh, choke up and do a little bit more of the, uh, the hammer grip there if I am using the uh, finger choil. But yeah, pretty interesting. So, ready for that. And we also have ourselves a few Tucson's. Let's see, what do we got here? Oh. Okay, yeah, this is the, uh, the 162. The real one, not the, uh, the weird one in Micarta and 12C27 that I had. This was... The one with uh, S90V. White Mountain had it for a, uh, a price that I was willing to part with for it. And, yeah, already the feel in the hand. Quite a bit better than the, um, the uh, 12C27 version. Let's see if I can't pull that out for some uh, comparing and or contrasting. That's not the drawer. Do, do, do. Oh, someone said to do it. Here we are. All right, yeah, so this is the, uh, the weird funky version that I have in uh, the micarta there. And yeah, 12C27. A little better action. Definitely feels more um, substantial going on there. But otherwise, I mean, it's, you know, it's pretty much the same knife there. Same um, blade stock thickness and all that sort of stuff. Obviously, this has the uh, titanium milled clip instead of the uh, the deep carry one. This has a really early detent on it, which is pretty cool. I look, I do appreciate that because not an enormous amount of two suns do. A lot of them have a pretty late one, so it'll end up getting that. I don't really like the phrase, but that double clutch kind of thing going on. But uh, yeah, this thing's going to be fun. I can tell. Nice uh, sharpening choil there, obviously. Yeah. I've been wanting this for uh, quite a long time, but a lot of people have also wanted it and were paying prices that uh, I wasn't willing to, but hey, I finally got that one in. Let's see, what else we got here? Uh, I think this is a Cobra. Ooh, it is definitely oiled up. <laughs> Chunk, yeah, that is the Cobra, the TS-190. Oh, man, yeah, that is super nice and thin behind the edge there as well. That's pretty darn awesome. I kind of had my eyes on these for a while and just never quite picked it up, but... Again, um, White Mountain Knives had some available, and, um, geez, it was... Uh, yeah, for this being a titanium frame lock, M390, uh, yeah, it was under a hundred bucks. So <laughs> it's definitely a, uh, a great value for it there. We got those, uh, milling patterns. I do like that it's on both sides there. That's kind of nice. It does dip down in front a little bit and that does, um, feel pretty comfortable if I do want to do a, a pinch grip on that. Instead of uh, using that uh, saber or hammer. 
So, yeah, I like that quite a bit. Hopefully the steel on this thing is uh, worth a darn. I suppose we'll find out with this and, uh, you yeah, know, eventually this as well. All right, so this last one is kind of a cheaper variant. This is uh, what I believe is known as the Stingray. This is a Mazwan design. This is also absolutely coated in um, oil. Uh, all right, yeah, TS-191. Hey, this is the 190. <laughs> Yeah, this is a, yeah, I really want to say this is a Stingray. If not, it's a Sabertooth. Um, I don't remember exactly since, um, well, I haven't actually had it yet to be able to uh, remember the name on it. This one normally um, is an S90V, but hey, they made them in D2. Uh, I had seen one go up on uh, eBay. And I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And then I saw them, like, the next day on uh, White Mountain Knives. And they were like, what, 85, 86 bucks or something like that? Definitely worth it to me. Yeah. No snaggletooth there. Amazingly, not even one on the uh, the Sabertooth. Or not, not the Sabertooth, the Cobra. And, of course, the uh, Wong really doesn't have too much of a problem with that in his designs. So, yeah, that's kind of neat. The flipper tab on this is um, you have to have a little bit more conscious effort to be able to deploy that. And that's okay. You know, it's just not um, sticking out farther. So, you have a little bit less leverage. But otherwise, it's great. Still has that Mazwan clip with that uh, ball point there, which means this thing is probably going to be ridiculously difficult to get in and out of the pocket for probably quite a while. Unfortunately, that's it's what he likes with his pocket clips. So uh, it is what it is. This thing is actually quite a bit thinner than I thought it was going to be, though. So it's pretty interesting. Got nice jumping right where I would want it to be there. This has a, uh, a saber grind to it rather than uh, a higher flat grind. Still, this is a really, really nicely ground blade. Super, super thin as well. So that's great. Um, we have a very, very gradual plunge grind here, but it does end before the uh, the blade starts there. So you do have a decent amount of sharpening going on there. And yeah, very, very little to or small tolerances between um, where the, uh, the blade actually sits between those scales. A little bit uh, less going on here on the, um, or a little bit more going on here on the Cobra and uh, the, uh, the 162, yes. But yes, all right, uh, let's see. I should have, oh, they're over here. I'm not gonna do all of the measurements here, but uh, I will have them down in the description by the time this video actually goes live. I suppose I'll close that up because I don't need to cut anything else open now. But I did want to see how thin this thing actually is. Make sure I'm zeroed out. Yeah. Yeah. 0 0.477 inches. Or for y'all, it's a little over uh, 12 millimeters thick. I, uh, I quite like how this thing feels fairly thin, but it still has some contour going on to it. Really, really comfortable. I, I didn't really think it was going to be anywhere near that comfortable. But, uh, yeah, this one's definitely a banger in the hand. I like that quite a bit. Sweet. Let's see. What do we got for this one here? We got 13.3. 
that's going to be 0 0.525, and then this guy is definitely going to be a thick boy. Yeah, 0 0.62 inches. Otherwise, 15.8 millimeters there. And, uh, yeah, none of these are really small, of course. Uh, the Cobra here, uh, maybe 3.5, possibly 3.6, but I think 3.5 inches for that. This guy, of course, yeah, getting much closer to, uh, 4 inches there. This one actually, something I didn't notice about it earlier is uh, this one has a bead blast finish. I have not really seen that from many Tucson's. I've seen it a little bit more with the uh, the six leaf ones, but uh, it's kind of interesting to see that. And then this guy is, yeah, this is probably like 3.65 an inch. Pretty neat. This one being um, quite affordable, like I said, it was like 85 or 86 bucks. For me, that's definitely worth it uh, because their D2 is really, really uh, good quality stuff, or at least they uh, tend to do a really good job on the heat treat of it. And, um, well, especially with their S90V, but also M390, it's a little bit more of a toss-up. You can get um, an absolutely excellent knife, and I've got a few of those. But I've also got some um, ones that, um, you know, kind of you've underperformed from D2 because uh, they're a bit soft or they didn't hold them at the, uh, the temperatures for long enough or some of the, uh, the crystalline structures to fully change, blah, 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 you know, the whole invisible forces of uh heat treatment and stuff like that but hey i got some uh, interesting knives here this one is actually a little interesting to me this is the uh as i said earlier it's the uh the cmb predator here and it's in d2 which is interesting and uh because um the other cmb knife that uh i have some from them which is a t west design this one doesn't really have a maker's mark, so it's probably uh, an internal design team. Um, yeah, it's using D2 instead of uh, K110, which is what uh, some of their others, uh, budget knives like these, um, have been in. Obviously, that's just D2, but it's from Bowler, whereas this is uh, just kind of interesting that uh, they would just went with uh, whatever D2 that they wanted. And... Yeah, the zip slips seems to be pretty interesting to me. Couldn't really do anything about um, the fact that uh, this thing is black coated, which generally isn't uh, the way that I like to roll all that much. This one's got a, a glossy finish on there, so I'm guessing it's probably, well, I don't know. I don't really want to make any assumptions because I'm probably wrong. It's either... Um, a Cerakote or a uh, physical vapor disposition. Yeah, not sure. They didn't really uh, give me the uh, the information on that. But hey, these are um, some new knives that I got. And uh, yeah, most of them are pretty big. Eh? What do you expect with uh, hands like these? But uh, <laughs> yeah, and these are definitely not new designs from Tucson for sure. I mean, they're, yeah, what? 162, 190, and 191, so they're, you know, below the uh, the 200 line. They've been out for quite some time. I just personally haven't picked them up, and now I have. And then this guy is fairly new. And, um, well, at least the uh, the 4V variant of this uh, has it's been out for maybe a month or two. Maybe a little bit longer. Uh, not a crazy amount of time, but, hey, I was... Happy to pick this up, and, uh, well, I, I don't know, but uh, hopefully this one ends up being just a little bit easier to uh, put my particular uh, sharpening on it without spending 8 million hours like I did with the, uh, the Kaiser Feist. Man. All right, well, this was fun, and I was expecting these things to trickle in throughout the week because I didn't purchase them all in the uh, the same 
at the same time. They all kind of went available at uh, different times. <laughs> so I was surprised when they all showed up at the same time. But all right, well, I'll stop hassling it. You can get on with your day and doing stuff that's probably much more interesting than this. So as always, I appreciate y'all for watching and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo.